Hi guys, well welcome back to Allotment Diggers. It's a bit overcast today. At least the sun the sun's trying to get out. Um it's no wind, it's pretty calm actually. Um can't hear the um the, the turbines at the at um Warburton power station. I can't hear the hospital sirens going. I can't hear the motorway very much or the railway just uh, hundred yards to this way towards me. All I can hear at the moment is the birds. However, um, I mean we've got the airport comes over. It's getting closer. The sort of um, the path, flight paths, getting more to over, over um, west uh, for some reason. We see a lot of planes overhead. They do make a lot of noise. And then you've got the police whirly bird. That's up. Um, you're normally hovering over everywhere. And um, to make things worse, in the next six or seven months. There's going to be an Ellie pad at the back of my plot. Yeah, the hospital, um, Salford Royal Hospital, um, which is about 100 yards um, to the west of the allotments, they're having an helicopter pad put in for them, um, you know, to, to airlift um, emergency um, accidents and stuff like that into the hospital. So it can get quite noisy on this allotment at times. Anyway, it's very peaceful and very quiet and you can hear the birds chirping away and the dogs in the background. <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's turning out to be a, a lovely um, Sunday morning. Um, early in the week, uh, I managed to graft that, uh, well, I fixed that um, apple tree um, which had broken. I had two, two choices. People said just cut it off, put a bit of wax over the end of it have done with it. I did that with the uh, the Golden Delicious and it was the main trunk what had snapped. I cut it off and I trained another branch to become the main the main trunk of the tree and everything worked out well. However this time I decided to go a different way. I do like to experiment and what I did was I fixed the the main trunk, the Sado masochist in me um, as you'll see in the clip, um, took over, and I think we did a good, good, good job. However, I'm sure we're going to have a few. Um, I don't know what you call yourselves, who, who, who are spellier trees, orchard keepers, what have you. <laughs> uh, I've never really thought about it, but uh, you'd probably be rolling on the floor laughing the way I, I actually um, fix it. But you see the reason why it broke in a bit and um, this is just a temporary fix and for, for about three four months I'm going to take it off and I'm going to put emp around it eventually but let me show you what we what we did. Well first things first I need to remove all these apples off here some of them are crappy some of them um, well they're all going in the bin um, the reason why they're like that is because they've been um, damaged by the uh, the wasps so I've got a pair of scissors here so I'm going to remove all these apples off it yeah it's just the sheer weight of all these apples on this tiny little branch I mean no I mean the sheer amount of them. Well, believe it or not, I've almost filled a bucket full of them here. Take some of this weight off this this main stem. That's all the apples. Right, I've got to be careful what I do here. So, we've got a bucket full of apples, scrumpy apples there. Nothing I can do really with them. Oh, still another apple on the. Anyway, 
Now then, uh, and there's another that at the top here. They're all on this branch. So I think I'm only going to get one stab at this. Let's set the camera up a bit better. So we removed all the apples off it. And I've got my bucket repair kit here. This is where it's broke here. And uh, we're going to try and do... Uh, it's, it, I think it... Well, there we go. That's not too bad, that. Now, we'll put that there for the time being. Hang on. Got this round here. This is that Velcro that um, I've used. Right. Now, we've got it. So it's pieced up here. What I'm going to do is wrap some wrap some string around here. This well, this is just a temporary thing. This we'll, I'll, we'll take this off at the end of the at the end of the year. But, I'm gonna do is wrap this round so now I'm not wrapping it round the this um, cane here I'm wrapping it round the tree I say I can get it to knit together this can be cut off at a later date this is where the break is here that joins so far so good I've got a metal pole that I can drive in the ground here and fasten this up. So give me a second. Now you may think I'm going to leave it like that, however... I'm hoping that I can get this wax off this candle here and use it to... ...cover the... Doing very well, am I? It's 
it's getting melting and I can start dripping it onto the this bit here because only this bit Well, that is completely covered in wax now, so that'll stop it getting wet inside. There we go. So, it's all tied up, secured here. Um, I've tied it all the way up. I've waxed, put wax all the way around it to stop any water getting in in the crack in the, the joint. Bloody hell. Candle there, very uh, smelly. So this is all, all sealed. I have got some tape here. So, just uh, gonna put a little bit of tape around it as well. So in about a couple of months, what I do is I cut this off here and um, I redo it again. Yeah, don't really need this now, uh, but, I'm, but I am going to put them on just to give them, give this branch more support. And what I will do is put a. A proper steak in here as well, but uh, yeah, um, it's about the best I can do. There we go. Jobs are good. Uh, fingers crossed uh, that it mends itself. But yeah, candle wax, string. Um, should be good enough. There we go. Anyway, that's that. I'm just going to go and put these, get rid of these um, apples. Because they're not, they're not proper, they're not really ripe. And uh, I've got absolutely hundreds of them. That should be, that should hold. Also look at it. So there we go, folks. Um, tied it up, put wax all over it to stop it getting water and moisture inside it, then taped it up. Can't get any better than that. So you see the sadomasochist there with the um, with the wax and the the rope. Yeah, we did a good job of that. We tied it up good and proper. <laughs> Yeah, behave. But yeah, uh, joking aside, um, hopefully that will that will take. And uh, we we actually managed to get it where it had, it had broken jaggedly, so we managed to get it all perfectly in. I've got um, a bar in there now. It's taped to the bar as well, uh, waxed up. And uh, we took the top part, which was bent. We took that off. And hopefully it will um, it will graft itself back together, and um, we sh we should have a reasonable apple tree at the end of it. It's a very young apple tree as well, but uh, yeah, the reason why it broke, as you could see, we had a bucket of apples there off that branch. Unfortunately, anyway, that was the the apple tree. I was giving me orders uh, the other day as well. Uh, 
We need some rhubarb. Well, these are about two, two foot long, these things. I don't need many of them. Just chopping top and tailing them. Throw these in the compost bin. You can actually make um, a weed killer out of these as well. You could just drop them on the ground where the, uh, where the rhubarb is and they'll mulch into the ground as well. So, you know. You don't need to throw them away. Right. The table's getting a bit crowded now. about the 10th harvest of this stuff. So there we go, some nice rhubarb. Right, I'm just gonna get rid of the tops and then we'll bag it up. So that was the rhubarb, what we've uh, just uh, just harvest. Um, some bloody big rhubarb, uh, but um, we've got plenty more there. And um, so that was the rhubarb crumble. I've, they have they like rhubarb crumble, crumble and custard. However, I'd, uh, I fancied an apple pie, so I went and got myself some of these. These are absolutely perfect, these apples, by the way, guys. Bramleys. Absolute perfect, they are. No earwigs, no nothing. Just how we like them. What tends to... Oh, I'm going to swing the camera on so I can see that I've been shot. Right, what tends to happen with um, Bramleys? and any apple, when you get the two apples together it makes a perfect environment for for um, wood lice, uh, um, earwigs and the the living just here and as you can see these are perfectly clean that's because we, we treated the tree a little bit earlier on in the year anyway um, we put grease bands and grease up the thing but uh, it doesn't stop them all but yeah these are a result of uh, Bramley, so I'll just get a few more. Uh, I think we'll be good to go. See, again, perfect apples. Right, I think we've got enough. 
that should do the trick. Let's go and get up the t up to the top of the plot and get it all put away. Be right back, folks. So as you saw there, some beautiful apples. Um, the, the reason why they're, they're like that, and um, they're not all full of um, wasp um, holes and um, full of wood lice and um, earwigs, is because we put um, grease on the bottom of the tree earlier in the year, and um, before the, uh, all the creepy crawlers decided to um, wake up out their hibernation and climb up the tree. So we got to it before that and we used um, these uh, wasp um, traps as well and um, yeah the results are pretty good, the very clean apples and bramleys and um, what the, 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 um, the earwigs um, like to do is live in, you get two apples together, you sort of live in them and they start eating around you know basically eating their house buggers but yeah the We've uh, we sorted it this year and we've got some really really nice apples. So yeah, the next thing I was told uh, they wanted some rabbit food. Um, we're talking lettuce here, guys. Um, some radicchio lettuce. I told them we're growing some radicchio lettuce there, and they're just darkening up now. So well, they've darkened up. So I decided to to harvest one of them as well. Don't know what they're all getting excited about, but what I'm going to do is go and grab one of them radicchio over there. Um, lettuce. Do you think it's that what's um, got them all a buzz? I have to be careful, I notice there's a bloody nettle there. But um, yeah, let's go and grab one of them radicchio. I'll show you what they look like when, uh, when I've um, harvested one. Shut you or you'll be on the main, main, on the main course. There you go folks, beautiful radicchio lettuce and a few for the, a few leaves for the birds, chickens. Right, chickens are happy and I'm happy. So even the chickens got some out of that. But um, yeah, here's the here's what I'm taking on today. Well, guys, we've got the radicchio. It's got a beautiful firm art on it, which is good. Got some lovely rhubarb, and we've got these um, Bramley um, baking apples here, which we just harvest from the tree. You just see me doing. And you just see me doing the rhubarb, and you just see me doing that. So anyway, um, I say most things are coming to an end now. But uh, this is the best time of year when you're harvesting everything. So we've got the uh, rhubarb crumble, we've got enough for the apple pie and again we've, um, we've got the rabbit food for the girls. They like the salads, that sun's coming out now and it's hitting me on the side of the face. Hope it ain't causing too much problems there with the optics on the camera. Although it shouldn't do, it's a bloody good camera. Anyway. Um, I was here yesterday and I was having a drink of coffee and I noticed uh, something in the sky and I thought, oh, that's interesting. It was a buzzard. So anyway, by the time I got my camera out and I got, got it to, to where, where I could actually point the camera at it, um, it turned into, well, let me show you. There's a buzzard there. Hovering over the top of the allotments. I don't know if you can see it in the in the shot. In fact, there's two of them. What they're doing? They're riding the thermals to get. In fact, there's three of them. Bloody hell! And they're right in the sun, the buggers. In fact, there's four of them. Bloody hell! Four buzzards over there, look at these buggers. 
I don't know you're picking these up, guys. You know what? I can't. I've, I've tried to zoom in on them. What's going to happen is um, the focus is not going to work. But they are buzzards, and there's, there's four of them there. I hope I can't get the camera pointing at the buggers. See if we can. Oh, actually, there's five of them. Bloody hell. Six of them. Oh, they, uh, hang on, let's come here. Right. Well, I've got five in shot, but there's another one. It's just coming into shot. But that, yeah, five, I can't, six buzzards in total. But there's five there uh, circling in the, the, the thermals, getting out altitude. So there wasn't one buzzard, there wasn't even two or three, or four, or even five. I counted six buzzards. Now, um, probably if you live in um, Berkshire, somewhere like that, these things are pretty common. Um, however, I live in the middle of um, probably the most polluted city on, in, in England, Salford. 30 years ago, the rats couldn't even live in Salford. That's how bad it was. However, over the over the last 30 odd years, it's been cleaned up quite a bit. I mean, we've got foxes on the lot up on the allotments, hedgehogs running all over, and we've got abundance of rats. Some beautiful rats as well. I've seen them as big as cats. Absolute stonkers. I thought I was looking at a cat once, and a bloody big rat like this big thing then that's not counting its tail this is the rat this eye off the ground anyway that's another story but uh, yeah we've got um, bats flying around here on the allotments um, they actually come over from my house I only live about 150 yards away from the allotments I drive around every day I can't walk around uh, um, got my legs crushed in an accident and walking it's pretty tough so anyway um, the bats li actually live in the eaves of my house and my next door neighbour's house and what they do, they come out of the night, they fly over onto the allotments and they, they fly around the allotments feeding on the, um, the moths and what have you. And uh, yeah, we've got uh, such a diversity, diversity of, um, of wildlife on here, we've got different um, types of um, newts, uh, we've got crested smooth newts, is it palm, palm, I can't remember the, the, the other name of them, but we've got um, the common frogs, the toads, we've even got natterjacks, and they're indigenous to, to whales them. <laughs> I had a friend years ago, and he went to Wales, and he brought some of these natterjack frogs back, and he put them into um, Winterbottom's um, pond and um, the they sort of multiplied and then um, I think it was one of his friends brought some and introduced them onto the allotments and there are natterjacks on here, there's not a lot of them on here but uh, there, there are some so uh, he shouldn't have done it but then again you tell a, a nine year old kid that he can't, do a, can't pick a frog up and take it home that's what he did, although no, no, he took a few home, didn't he? And that's why the everything, there's so much wildlife. Um, the birds are, again, the, the, so many different species on the allotments, it's absolutely amazing. But them buzzards, six of them are counted, absolutely awesome. Anyway, um, oh, I'm, I'm just forgetting, I nearly forgot again. I was. I was just um, checking me, my channel out, make sure everything's okay, I'm not getting any, um, any strikes against me. <laughs> You've got to be careful, uh, any music or out like that, um, YouTube will uh, come down on you. If you get any music playing in the background, um, it's, it's pretty, you know, they're pretty tough with you. However, um, I, I've not had any strikes, I actually noticed I've actually hit 5,000 subscribers. And that's a bit of that's a bit of a, a bit of a shot because, like I said, I'm not don't promote my video. I, I know there's a lot of you guys out there promote it to make a few quid. However, you know I don't have the I don't have the analytics on to make any money. It's, the, the channel's not about making money. I've, I've not, 
I think I've made 70 pence and the reason why I made 70 pence is because I had to turn one of my videos, the analytics on to play this piece of music. The guy whose music it was, he wanted to make some money off the off the, the music so I had no choice but to turn it on or get rid of the video. So anyway, that was the only one of about 420, 430 videos I've made um, where you got the analytics on. And the reason why, like I say, I'm not out to make any money on it. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely surprised. I'm absolutely gosmacked. Um, I've got actually 5,000 subscribers who tune in each week and watch the videos. And uh, as you know, I like to answer every, every um, comment. Um, it might get a bit difficult when, I, when, we, when we double up on um, that 5,000. Then again. Uh, I'm in no rush to it, 10,000. I'm quite happy. I'm actually chuffed a, a monkey with a bag of nuts to actually have hit the, the 5,000 mark. And I just want to thank everybody who's been along for the ride over the years um, for subscribing to the channel. And um, hope there'll be many more to come. Anyway, like I say, I've talked a lot long and hard, long enough. So I'm going to get off. I've got a few more jobs to do. Um, I've got another little video to throw up. Uh, it's the six for that review in a, thing. In a day or two. Um, it's nothing, in, nothing fantastic. It's got a bit of music to it, and it just shows you what the plots look like over the last six months. I'll be doing a, a yearly one as well, so I, I need to get that one up. It was I should have put it up two months ago, but I've been so busy doing other things, I've, I've not put it up. So watch out for that one as well. And. Um, when I've got time, I'll try and put a, a little bit of a competition up as well as a thank you for everybody who's uh, subscribed to the, the channel, so watch out for that one. It won't be far away. So that's it, we're out of here, we're going to head towards um, them pearly gates and we'll go back into the rat race. So with that, thanks for watching and goodbye for now.